time now for a business update. And around the world, people have been struggling with rising inflation, and the U.S. is no exception. Rising prices were at the heart of a speech by President Joe Biden, and Charles Pellegrin is on set to tell us more about it. Hi, Allison. Absolutely. Uh, the American president said fighting inflation was his top priority. And uh, for that, he has a number of tools at his uh, disposal to tackle that uh, to tackle that issue. So uh, let's take a look at that data. Uh, in March, consumer prices rose 8.5 percent year on year. That's the highest pace in over four decades. The last time we saw this was in 1981. The good news here is that economists believe that this was the peak. We'll know for sure when the new data for April is published later this Wednesday. Nevertheless, inflation will con continue to be high for months and will continue to be a problem for American households. Let's listen in to Joe Biden. We've built a strong economy with a strong job market. And I agree with what Chairman Powell said last week, that the number one threat is the strength, and that strength that we built is inflation. So the Fed should do its job, and it will do its job, I'm convinced, with that in mind. As you just heard, the onus is on the Federal Reserve to deal with this issue. America's uh, central bank has lifted interest rates to combat surging prices. But this followed a time where they actually kept those rates low in order to keep the ec economy afloat uh, during the pandemic. So it's a, a tricky balancing act for economists. I think they rightfully dropped interest rates to near zero to try to drive demand and, and keep the economy afloat. They also engaged in the sort of, you know, the bond purchasing uh, activities to try to drive down longer term interest rates, all those were appropriate at the time, figuring out when was the right time to start easing uh, accommodative monetary policy was more difficult. I think the Fed was maybe a little late in, in, in starting to increase interest rates. But again, they had to balance against that really unprecedented levels of uncertainty as it relates to um, developments with with the pandemic. And so it was, a, it was a challenging balancing act. And we got new data on consumer prices in China as well. Consumer prices there have risen 2.1 percent in April year on year. That's a steeper increase than the previous uh, month where they rose 1.5 percent and the months before that as well, as you can see on that graph. The big factor there is the ongoing COVID lockdowns, which are putting pressure on suppliers and driving up prices. Uh, that increase relatively benign, though, compared to the inflation in the rest of the world. Uh, factory prices also have risen, but at a slower pace than the previous month. Uh, let's see what the response to this uh, on the Asian markets has been. Uh, most forces are uh, trading up, especially those in China and Hong Kong. You can see uh, the Shanghai Composite up by about three quarters of a percent, the Hong Kong Hang Seng up by over a percent, and the Nikkei in Tokyo up by just uh, below a third of a percent. Kospi and Seoul just trading a little bit lower. Uh, investors they're also encouraged by signs that Joe Biden is considering lifting tariffs on Chinese goods imposed during the previous administration. European investors also looking ahead confidently uh, to that U.S. inflation data later this Wednesday and uh, that announcement that possibly inflation has peaked in the U.S. and rebounding, as you can see here, after a number of rough sessions. The Paris CAC uh, opening above a percent and the FTSE in London opening just above a third of a percent. The DAX in Frankfurt remaining unchanged. And here's one story that will leave some of you feeling just a little bit old. <laughs> Apple has just announced that they will stop producing the iPod after initially launching it 22 years ago, just over 21 years ago. The MP3 music device was a precursor to the iPhone and changed consumer electronics forever, also properly putting an end to the use of CDs. Shirley Sitbon has a story. 1,000 songs, 10 hours of battery life. It may not seem like much today, but when Steve Jobs first presented the iPod 21 years ago, music devices could only store a few dozen songs. With the iPod, Apple invented not only a device, but a combination of hardware, design and services. Because to get their music, users bought it on iTunes. An all-new distribution model. For the first time, music companies came on board hoping to slow illegal downloading. The iPod started the meteoric rise of Apple, now the world's biggest company. 
it was the catalyst leading to a series of record-breaking sales hits and the invention of the iPhone. In 2007, we added the iPhone, and in 2010, we added the iPad. Smartphones quickly eclipsed the iPod, a one-trick device. But the historic product is hailed with nostalgia as it's due to disappear, with some users tweeting au revoir and that the iPod changed their lives. So there you have it, Allison. For the viewers who are a bit younger, before the iPod, I used to walk around with a pouch full of CDs. It's extremely impractical. Yeah, totally. That was one of my first big gifts from my parents was a, a disc man. Hard to, yeah. And even, even iPods are obsolete now. Uh, Charles, thank you very much for that business update.